Hey everyone, welcome back to another Audi TT video. Now that I've got the Mark 1 Desert Green Pearl Roadster up and running and registered, it's time to put in some mods. And what a better place to start than upgrading this stock Bose radio setup. Now, a lot of people tend to get stuck when they install these. I'm going to detail what parts you need to make a successful installation for upgrading your OEM Bose radio in your Audi TT Mark 1. Alrighty, so what have we got here? Obviously there is the stereo and then I've got a few different um, wiring looms here. This one I've adapted to plug into the stereo and then I'll plug the head unit's um, plugs into these two for power and the speaker out, but I don't think I will plug that one in because I'll need this adapter here, which is this red one, I'll need that to convert the signal from the amp to these RCAs so that I can plug them into the stereo. I've also got some other bits here as well. So there's the antenna lead here with the blue signal for the powered antenna. And just in case, I've also got some ground loop isolators because in the past experience that I've had, I would get a little pop whenever I turn the stereo on and I'm hoping that that doesn't happen but if it does I've got these guys to hopefully help that uh, prevent that from happening so I've used these stereo removal keys nice and easy to use so I've already kind of popped it out but basically all you need to do is pop these in here you'll feel it sort of grab and click and then you just pull the stereo out let me just quickly do one of them so you can see exactly what I mean so you can hear that click and that's kind of like stuck in there from there you're able to just pull the stereo out like that and then to release the tool you'll need to then press this button and then the key comes out so you just press that you can see that moves and you're able to remove remove the stereo. I'm just gonna really quickly do a sound test here so I can have a point of reference. So it actually sounds pretty good, I think. Um, so that's a good sign. This, the speakers are still good, the subwoofer is good, and I've got good volume here. All right, so let's unplug this. And there's the wiring diagram on the top. So what I'll also do is detail the wiring diagrams from Elsewin and how there are some slight differences from the generations. Antenna plug, I believe that's for the bows. Go, there's the red plug. So this red plug is actually for the CD player. All it is, it's got a ground and an illumination. This one here is where the audio signals all come into play and let's see, that's the 20 pin plug and this is the power slash K line slash ignition if I can get it out At the top you've got this this is your guide to help you figure out what's going on with wiring these are all going to be the same on any model on the underside, this is telling you some critical information that the speakers for this unit are at 4 ohms and then you've got a little 5 amp fuse which is right there. VIN and that's it. That's all the interesting stuff anyway. Let's have a look at the wiring for this, alright? So a lot of people always get really confused with the wiring. And I can see why, because there's a whole bunch of different colors and everything here, but basically this black plug, which has the thick brown and red wires coming out of it, that's your power plug. Blue and white, you've got the K-line, uh, sorry, illumination, gray is the K-line, and then which one's the S-contact? Because S-contact, yeah, S-contact, 
which is this one under here, you can't really see it, but if I flip it over, it's yellow with a red line, red tracer. S contact is your ignition. Then on the 20 pin plug, the rest, all this stuff here has got to do with a CD player and won't be utilized in this setup. But what that red plug in this harness is going to do is it'll hook up to the wires here and you can see that detail on the wiring diagram and those wires are the feed from the amp which is hidden in the back in the Roadstar. And like I said before, this red plug here has got um, some illumination and a ground signal. That's just for the CD player. It's just extra. And again, that's antenna. So I'll just walk through the wiring of the Bose stereo for a pre-facelift car or pre-2000, I think it's 2001. That's when the um, wiring diagram sort of changed a little bit for the Audi TT Roadster. This is the pinout sticker on the radio which provides everything you need to know. So plug A, which is the most important one, is the power plug. The pins are arranged in a kind of funny zigzag up and down right to left pattern where number one is marked GA which is GALA and that is short for graduated audio level adjustment. So this is a speed signal to the head unit that adjusts the audio level depending on the speed you're going to compensate for road noise. Mostly it's not required, but it is good to know should your head unit require it, and some do. Number two is mute, and this is gonna be useful if you have an aftermarket hands-free system that needs to mute the head unit when you're on a call. This was empty on my plug. Number three is K-Line, and often that gets used for the 12 volt signal which allows your head unit to work but messes up diagnostics. So you want to make sure that nothing is ever plugged in this pin, ever. Nothing. Number four, you've got S-Contact, and always use this pin for the switched 12 volt or ignition live. So that's the S-Contact and number four pin. Number five is marked as antenna, but on my head unit, there was no wire going here because the antenna plug you saw is separate on, on its own. Number six is the illumination wire that gets signal from the light switch. You got number seven, which is the permanent live or battery 12 volts required to give power to the head unit. And this is a thicker wire. And then you've got number eight, and that is ground, which is the obvious one, and that's brown. Now, what I'll pop over to the right are the colors of these wires so you know how to identify them. So number one, which is the GA, is green yellow. Number two is empty. Number three, gray white. Number four, yellow red. Nothing at five. Number six, gray blue. Number seven is a thicker wire, which is red and white. And number eight, again, is thicker than the rest of them, which is brown. Other wires, you've got plug B, which is the speaker signal wires. Now this plug isn't present on a Bose setup, but if you don't have Bose, you'll see that there are wires there and they will give the audio signal to the speakers. Plug C is another important plug for the Bose setup as it has pins numbers one to six to provide the audio signal to the Bose amplifier. They're all line out signals, which is pretty much the same as an RCA. So pin number one is the left rear speaker signal. Pin number two is a right rear speaker signal. Number three is a common ground and all of these share the ground, which I think leads to a popping issue that you'll see later on. Number four is the left front speaker signal. Number five is a right front speaker signal. And number six is the amp turn on signal, which is another important one that you don't wanna miss as this is the wire connected to the amp. And if it's, this wire isn't connected, the amp doesn't know how to turn on and send audio to the speakers and then plug D this is the red plug now this will be wired up if you have a factory telephony navigation or CD player installed my car had only the CD player installed so there was a ground wire there and another illumination wire at pins 9 and 10 the other pins are listed in the table on the left for the navi and phone so that's all of the plugs and all of the different wires that you want to be paying attention to. The most important one being that black plug that has the power wires and the ground wires at them. So those should be universal and it'll just be a matter of matching up the colors to your aftermarket stereo's loom to get things working right. 
Now the following screens are for those who are into the wiring diagram, so feel free to pause and take in all of the details, which shows exactly what wire goes where, the wire colors, and uh, shows you the quirky update to the wiring post-2001, where there's extra speakers that have been added. Okay, so first of all, putting the cage in, just feed that guy through, make sure you've got all of the all the plugs that you need and come through it and that will push in and then we'll have to use these little tangs to lock it into place KG and I had to push that in a lot <laughs> it was really tough to get in and this is the head unit that I've got it's a it's an old school one it's an uh, Pioneer DEH 80 PRS okay so you can get this out quite a lot so like that that's the furthest it'll go before it kind of gets stuck and what I'll do is put the Pioneer in and I'm purely just gonna test this I'm not going to like hard install it just yet because what I want to do is also run some USB cables obviously I'll want to run some um, of the RCA's here as well it has a microphone it's got a remote input too which I will try and figure out how to do um, here is I think some inputs yeah or some audio and that's your antenna all right so just just as a test run I've wired this up so that it hopefully should should work here and as I was saying before this black plug here is the one that will give us power so I'm just gonna put that in there and hopefully that's all correct let's double check everything ground power yellow yellow yep ignition so remembering it goes on this side where the brown wire is ground illumination yellow to red is s contact but that is the switched live so then on the harness side of things the um, adapter sorry you got ground orange and white is usually the illumination and then yellow is the um, ignition signal and on the other side this is a little bit confusing because this has the speaker wires in the same thing too I've adapted this from a Mark II harness. So this one here, red, that is permanent live. So red to permanent live. Then uh, there is K-line, that's not hooked up to anything. Double check that, good. And then another signal there, and I think that's called a stereo. Um, and that should be enough to test that it powers on. So let's just double check that. Feel that. Very good. Don't want the heater on again. Excellent. So that works. Language is yes, not English. Don't want what to say. So to get the audio going, all I need is this side because I've already got that side working. Okay, so in theory, this will plug into here. 20 pin plug. So the one with the heaps of plugs. So remembering that this side here, where it's kind of like there's a red with white stripes on it. And then we've got some sort of clear looking ones with the wiring in the middle. Then a whole bunch of tape just joining it up the top there. So that's where the red 20 pin plug goes to convert the signal over to RCA. So then put these to their respective points right left Duh. there and then this is the amp signal so I'll need to hook that into this guy here and just for the sake of doing this quickly I'm just I'm not going to fix that properly obviously I'll need to fit that properly or change this end over actually because I've already got the end here. Okay, so the only way I can see this happening is to go like 
Yes. These guys. In there. Do the same for the front channel. see if that does the popping thing or not hopefully not yeah that's way better just have ignition off no pop up to Bluetooth already should connect to my phone awesome it's working without the pops so um, let's go back to so yeah you can definitely see there's no more pop when turning the stereo on and off or when turning the car on and off so those ground loop isolators really work which is great all right, and just for experimentation's sake, what I'll do is I'll remove the ground loop isolator again. Let's see if removing one makes the pop return or not. straight away it comes back so I'm definitely going to run both of them <laughs> so I don't get that pop and you can hear it there when ignition has been turned off so definitely get yourselves one of these ground loop isolators so that you don't have to deal with that annoying pop and it's probably really damaging to the speakers as well so one more time Everything's plugged back in. Just wait for this beeping to go away. There you go. Zero poppage. Because you've installed some ground loop isolators. Really, really cool. Right, so you've probably noticed that when I turn this on, it keeps reverting back to the setup screen. So let me just show you what I mean. So that shouldn't be happening each and every time. So once you've set it up, it should just go straight into the normal home screen mode. And the way you can quickly fix that is by switching around the red and yellow uh, wires back here. So this often happens when the permanent ground and ignition are the wrong way around. So all I need to do is turn the car off switch these around and then you'll see that when I do set it up it'll just kick into its regular screen rather than putting the setup screen up each and every time and it'll go into set up again all right so fixing that is really quick and easy so you literally just need to unplug these them around so it goes red and yellow yellow and red all right so that will kick into setup again yes 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 yes, 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 yes. but you'll notice now that when I cycle the ignition it'll go straight into the tuner screen 
we go. So perfect. So yeah, if you're having troubles there where it's cycling back into the setup screen all the time, switch these guys around and you're good. And you'll notice that it makes a beeping sound as well. That's quite typical of the older head units. All right, so now to remove the instrument cluster so that I can wire up the mic. Push that in. There we go. Easiest thing to do here, push on the outside. Move one, two, change bit. So that's number four. Number five. So six. And then seven. Right in there, pointing towards the firewall. Okay, so what I like to do is release this sort of section a little bit first. Get here. Oh, it looks like there was something attached there, so let's be a little bit careful of that. Unhook the trim. On the right side, there's another fitting on that side as well. That should come out. And that's all we need. So you can see here, this is the fist control module, which is giving that aftermarket function to the instrument cluster. So there's two extra screws to remove. So you've got one here and then, oh, that's really loose. One there as well. So to take the instrument cluster out, just pull it forward from the bottom and it'll kind of come out like that. This is tight because there's extra hardware back here. So I just need to be a bit careful. So undo that. You can see this little pink locking clip there that needs to be lifted up. And you kind of have to do this by feel. There we go. There's three of those, there's a blue one, a grey one, and a green one. So you can see there, there's the pink locking thing and there's like a little locking tab on the main body of the plug. So you gotta push that locking thing down to be able to lift the pink section up. But for some reason, these are really tight. Let's try it on the green one. Yeah. Yep, yeah, so green one's easy-ish. Great, let's get rid of this. Grey one, please come off. So you gotta push down there and then release. So you push that, lift the pink tab up. And usually I do that by feel. Okay, so I've got the microphone here and all I'm going to do is from the instrument cluster section is feed this down to back here and you can just get it in from behind. Okay, there we go. Thread that through. Okay, so that can now plug into the back of the stereo. Which goes the little one. Okay, so it looks like I have the incorrect. 
<laughs> incorrect microphone. So while I am here, I will just pop this guy out because a lot of you guys have been asking about how do you get all those functions in your screen. So you can see this is the Fizz Control module from Turbo Zentrum. Um, look them up online, you'll see all the different models that it covers and you know, it does some pretty awesome stuff. So if you've heard of Color MFA, which I'll link you to in the top right of the screen, this is probably like the first generation of that where it integrates into the original red screens, um, uh, red screen where it just adds a whole bunch of functionality into it. So it doesn't replace anything in the instrument cluster here. What it does though is add a whole bunch of features. And so the I think the most convenient thing about this is that it is plug and play unlike the Color MFA which requires a massive massive retrofit, a lot of work and a lot of time. And that's how you upgrade your stock Bose concert radio in your Audi TT to your upgraded head unit. You can see it fits nicely and everything's working very well. Once again, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more Audi TT videos and see you next time.